In his debut as a second-year player, Melo showed off improvements to his defense, playmaking awareness, and overall comfortability running the show. He sparked a 24-0 third quarter run against the Pacers, scoring 12 of his 31 points in that clutch time frame. This video breaks down exactly how the Hornets 20-year-old sophomore LaMelo Ball looks crazy improved. Before continuing, only 27.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage and you're a fan of the NBA, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. LaMelo's jumper this year looks a lot more polished than it was in his rookie year in terms of his vamped footwork and smoother trigger on his release. He's boosted his ability to read defensive sets and he's choosing better areas on the floor to pull up from three. Melo's gotten more comfortable shooting 30 foot bombs, so his shooting range is evidently something he put a ton of work into. After getting it back from PJ Washington right here, Melo's got a premier wing defender on him. But Torrey Craig was sagging just a tad bit too much, and Melo got the Hornets announcer hyped. LaMelo! Oh! There were many instances of Melo making sound passes after getting trapped or blitzed, but I wanted to pinpoint one play down the stretch. This time, Malcolm Brogdon sagging, and in this case, is slow to rotate over to Melo. Instead of letting it fly, Melo up fakes, jab steps into his drive, and while most guards would have dumped it off to Kelly Oubre Jr., with all five defenders looking in his direction, Ball somehow still has the poise and wherewithal to make a split decision to find Hayward. The way Melo was able to hang in the air and still complete that pass was absolutely brilliant. On the other end, the start of this possession sees Justin Holiday try to pin down Melo in order to receive a pass from Sabonis, but this play just displays the upper body strength that Vols put on, just rips through Holiday, times his swipe of the ball perfectly to get the steal, and for the KO, he throws it down on the other end. Last year, players could back Melo down on the block and pull off the kind of plays that Justin was trying to do right here, but with Ball's new grown man strength, no one's getting away with that anymore. Given the ball swiping menace that Melo's seemingly become, Opposing players will have to earn completed passes when they travel to Charlotte. Finishing with 31-9-7 to go along with two steals, the entertainer shot 11 for 23 from the field overall and made seven of his nine three-point attempts. But what Charlotte did as a team was just as special as Lamelo's individual performance. With 8.27 left in the third, the Hornets trailed by 21 points. They cut that deficit to 11 in just over a minute and less than three minutes after initially getting down by 21. This triple from the Tsunami Poppy gave Buzz City a one point lead. The Pacers kept battling and even took the lead with 12.4 seconds left on some Torrey Craig free throws. Luckily for Charlotte fans, PJ Washington fought for the rebound right here and got to the charity stripe himself, giving the Hornets a one point win. Good on PJ for coming through after being mentioned in my secret weapons video. Go watch that after this. But speaking on the miraculous comeback from Charlotte, Indiana Pacers new coach Rick Carlisle had this to say, the building had been pretty dead in the first half. A lot of that was we were playing well. They got going and the energy in the building got going and when that happens, crazy things happen in this league. Well said Rick. Overall for Charlotte, Gordon Hayward scored 27. They got 14 each from newcomers Kelly Oubre Jr. and Ish Smith. Miles Bridges had 13 and Cody Martin had 10 for the Hornets. Don't forget the Hornets were playing without their leading scorer from last year in Terry Rozier. While LaMelo Ball's first year was about adjusting to the speed and talent of the NBA, year two for Melo is all about how he takes what he learns from that season and utilizes it this year. It's only been a one game sample size, but so far we've seen a sophomore who's far beyond his years in every aspect. He acts older than his age off the court, and his game between the lines is extremely advanced for a guy who just turned 20 years old back in August. Since their play styles are somewhat similar with their three-point shooting, let's relate Ball's early progression to Stephen Curry. Just think of how long it took Steph to develop into an MVP. It was a full three seasons before he took off in year four, 
Meanwhile, for Ball, after a Rookie of the Year season and a blistering start to 21-22, he looks ready to take off in only year two. He got MVP chance at the Hornets home opener last night, and while it'll probably be another few seasons until he's a candidate for the award, those chants just get you envisioning the type of season that Charlotte's point guard could potentially have this year. It's only one game, but it's safe to say Melo's already pulled off the greatest fit of the season with his green on green suit as well as his Lambo. Melo owns the moment on and off the court, a quality that if sustained, could lead the youngest big baller to heights even LeVar couldn't have predicted. Again, it's only one game, so I'm not going to break down too much more, but you can bet this channel's going to be following Melo's progression all season, so help me get to 50k if you're interested in that. Let me know your thoughts on Melo's year 2 debut in the comments. This was D-Flow, you're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.